Hello, it's me, Reza Gaming. Welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, a series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today we're going to be talking about the Hydrogen Vent, a really useful source of early game power with a slight wrinkle in that the Hydrogen comes out at 500 degrees C. <laughs> so this isn't too bad in the early game because the surrounding map is just going to absorb a lot of that heat. Uh, but Hydrogen does have a heat capacity of 2.4 DTU per gram per degree C, which is about 60% that of water. So it's not an insignificant amount of heat. The average output of this is going to be about 100 grams per second over its eruption and dormancy periods. So it's not something that you'll want to ignore forever unless you're dumping the heat into literally the entirety of the map. And what you can do is you can just have this erupt into a cold area like a frozen biome or run a pipe full of liquid from a cold area to absorb the heat from this and let you pump it safely. But if you don't do that, eventually, if you're using even a steel gas pump, that steel has an overheat temperature of 275 degrees C, and that's eventually going to overheat. And the other thing with this vent is that it also will overpressurize at a relatively low pressure of five kilograms per tile. So the point of this build is A, to handle the 500 degrees temperature and allow you to pump it safely with a steel pump, and B, to make sure that this geyser doesn't overpressurize easily. So first things first, we're gonna put in some insulated tile. You can make this with igneous rock, that'll be absolutely fine. And you're gonna to want to go up one side and then you're going to want to have like five tiles of width on the other side. This build could be mirrored in either direction. I'm gonna build the pump on the left just to show you how it works, but you can you can mirror it and have absolutely no issues. So we're gonna go up here, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna put some tiles in between the vent and the pump. And this is going to be to handle the overpressurizing. So you could use practically any material for this that's relatively conductive. I'm gonna go ahead and use granite. You, you can use refined metal for this. Aluminium is the best, it's the most conductive but you won't necessarily need it considering the low output of this. The conductivity of, of the granite material is going to be enough to handle this. So next we'll put in our steel pump. We're just going to put that in here. We're going to put another insulated tile here. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to set up an atmo sensor. This can be made of any refined metal. I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting lead in here because if you've not got your cooling up and running yet, there's a chance it could melt. So I'd, I'd not recommend using lead, but you could use you could use copper or any other refined metal. So you'll plug that in and then you'll set this to above 1000 grams of pressure. So this is only going to activate if it can get like a full pipe segment full of gas. Gas pumps use 240 watts each and only move 500 grams per second of gas. You're not getting a lot of value out of these, so you're wanting to make sure that they're moving the full amount of gas whenever they're operating. So next we're going to put a liquid vent here, and we're going to use something called a, a drip pump. So what this is going to do is it's going to drip a very tiny amount of liquid in here to move the gas from the geyser to this room where it will pressurize up to the liquid vent overpressure of 1000 kilograms per tile, which is significantly higher than your standard vent. It will give you a lot more time to actually pump all of this hydrogen out and use it for whatever you want. It's not an infinite storage, but it's, it's pretty close. It's, it's close enough most of the time. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to dump a heavy liquid. And I would recommend crude oil for this. You don't need very much at all. In fact, 30 grams is what you're looking for. So what you can get that by dumping uh, crude oil here with a bottle emptier or a pedestal or whatever using the move command. And then as it spills out into here, you can just have a dupe do a mop command. And if they do the mop command here, that's going to grab the liquid from this tile as well. And you're just going to be left with about 30 grams here. So that's what you're looking for really. So we'll get rid of the rest of this. And then you're going to want to have a liquid that you, you pump in here as well. Now, when this room is being cooled, it's going to end up at around steam turbine temperature, around 130 degrees C. So whatever liquid you pump in here, you don't really want it to boil in that temperature. 
otherwise what will happen is you're going to end up with a little bit of steam down here it's not going to stop this from working but it is going to stop it from completely vacuuming out this room you're going to end up with like a little bit of steam here then there's going to be like milligrams of hydrogen in here and then when this reactivates all that steam will get deleted and it will work again so you can use water in a pinch but the drip pump will use so little liquid that what liquid you actually do use it, it could be fairly rare like kilograms of the stuff will do so what we'll do is we'll just put like a little or we'll just put a dev pump here to illustrate it we're gonna fill this with petroleum if you have a little bit of crude oil you can make a little bit of petroleum it doesn't have to be a lot honestly 50 kilograms will do uh for hundreds of cycles so we're just gonna send this in here uh you can insulate this pipe if it's a liquid that's going to boil in this room, definitely insulate the pipe because it's going to be hanging around in here. Um, I would just recommend using a liquid that's not going to boil in this room. So I just recommend using petroleum. So that's going to go in here and then we're going to use a liquid valve. This is going to need to be made of steel because this room is going to be around 130 degrees C when it's cooled down. So we're just going to put that in here and then we're just going to plug the other end of the valve in here. We're going to set this valve to 0.1 grams per second so that's how little liquid you need for this to work 50 kilograms is going to last you but uh, 500 000 seconds in this game so that's a lot of time and you will need a duplicate to come in here and set this valve so we're going to get uh let's see who are we going to get hey we're going to get pay to do this very quickly there you go hey has now done this and they can leave <laughs> they can leave the room here you go Get out of there before it's too late. There you go. Good job. And then we're just going to give you a little bit of oxygen to breathe as well. I could just remove the dupe. That wouldn't be very nice. Here you go. So now this valve is set and the petroleum is coming in here so what's going to happen is initially this room is going to fill up with hydrogen from the from the vent none of the hydrogen is getting over here because the crude oil is blocking it but then as the liquid gets pumped into this vent what happens is when the petroleum actually goes in here you'll see it very quickly here's the petroleum appearing here and because it's such a low amount of mass that immediately gets deleted and then when it gets deleted the gas from this tile down here gets teleported onto the tile where the vent is now don't ask me why this works it just does so that's going to pressurize this room up to the liquid vent over pressure and it's going to depressurize this room and that's and that doesn't require any power it just requires the liquid we'll set we'll cut this off now and you'll see it's just drawing out 0.1 grams per second from this pipe and that'll be more than you ever need so that is how we stop the hydrogen vent from overpressurizing. and you can use this with any vent that looks like this this setup will work with any vent that looks like this it could be a natural gas vent it could be a polluted oxygen vent you name it provided that there's no state changes going on this will work so now that we've got that hydrogen moving over, the next step is actually going to be just making sure that this never overheats. Because we, we definitely don't want it above 275 degrees. But what we're going to do is we're going to cool it down to steam turbine temperature. And it's going to be relatively straightforward for us to do that. So what we'll do is we'll put some insulated tiles here. We'll put a liquid vent here. It doesn't really matter what this liquid vent is made out of. And you're going to want to pour... A decent amount of water here enough that it's definitely going to fill the steam turbine pipe let's say 20 kilograms per tile uh, we could put that in here so 100 kilograms total you could use a bottle emptier for this uh not gonna have any issues with that and then once that's done we'll just remove that and you'll just want to build insulated tile over this and there won't end up being any gases in here as a result you'll just have one tile uh, room of water that's eventually going to turn into steam as it gets heated by this hydrogen so next we'll put the steam turbine up here this could be made of any refined metal any plastic i would just recommend using lead and plastic it's not going to overheat no matter what under these conditions so you'll just put that there and we're going to self-cool this because hydrogen vents will not produce enough heat to 
overpower a self-cooled steam turbine. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put some radiant liquid pipes here. You can use lead for this. Again, aluminium is the best material, but lead will do. You do not need to be using superconductive materials for this build to work. Just use whatever you can get together early the game. The only thing you are going to want is just a little bit of steel. That's like the main thing you need. A little bit of steel for the pump and the valve, a little bit of crude oil for the drip pump here, and a little bit of petroleum for dripping into it. And that's all of the advanced materials I'm going to recommend for this. And then just put a little bit of insulated pipe here. I'm putting the liquid vent directly on top of the gas pump so that when the steam is turned into 95 degrees water, it absorbs the heat in this radiant pipe and it dumps the water out here, helping to cool this down. And then what we'll do with this steam turbine is we'll just put some insulated tiles here. And again, you'll just, you can just bottle empty some liquids in here. If you've already got a little bit of crude oil and a little bit of petroleum, that will do here. Like it doesn't need to be much, just enough to provide a little bit of extra conductivity compared to the gases that are up here. So like five kilograms per tile will do. Both of these, just put those here. And then what you can do is you can just seal this off. And that's not gonna have any issues. So just seal up the top of the map before, uh, before this all melts. So yeah, then you can just seal this off and that'll be absolutely fine. And there you go, that's basically it. So the last bit that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually build your hydrogen infrastructure. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain exactly how you want to set that up, that's up to you. But we're just gonna put the hydrogen generator here and a battery, and we're just gonna connect this all up with conductive wire. You could use a regular wire for this, but I'm just gonna use conductive wire. Um, this this whole network is gonna draw less than a kilowatt. So you can use a regular wire without any issues. So we'll just plug all that stuff in there, and then you'll just want a, a gas pipe to go between the pump and the hydrogen. Like that. And that's basically it. So we're going to let this run for a little bit. As you'll see, it's going to take a while to heat up all of this water. The hydrogen vent is producing its heat, but it's going to take a while for this to get up to steam temperatures, which is absolutely fine. So yeah, here you can see now we've got um, a bit of temperature in here from the hydrogen vent running for a little bit. You can see it's still depressurizing absolutely fine, even though there's loads of pressure in this room with the gas pump. The steam is coming out of the turbine here and condensing into water. Uh, as the granite isn't super conductive, it is occasionally just coming out as water before it heats up on the rest of this material. You can put some temperature plates in here as well to help with this. Um, if you have diamond, definitely use that, but we're just gonna put some granite temperature plates in here to illustrate to illustrate the effectiveness of just using the basic material so yeah we'll put that in you can see the steam turbine is still running when it's actually hot enough to run but yeah the overall message from this is that the steam turbine is going to get rid of the heat a lot faster than it comes in especially if you have a large amount of hydrogen in here so this is absolutely enough to make sure that the hydrogen doesn't get above sort of around 130, 135 ish degrees C. And then it's gonna be absolutely fine for your steam, uh, for your steel pump to handle all of this, for all of your steel equipment in here. And as you can see, we haven't even gone below 10 kilograms of petroleum in here. It requires very little liquid to actually work. The self-cooled steam turbine is running absolutely fine. If you do the maths, the, the heat flux, the, Self-cooled steam turbine will cool itself down by about 330 kdTUs ish and a hydrogen vent needs to have an average output of about 340 grams per second over the course of its um, eruption period for it to produce more heat than that. So in this case this hydrogen vent is producing 386 but that's only active for 328 seconds every 725 seconds. So if I whip out the calculator and do some quick maths on that, that gives us a effective um, output of 175 grams per second of 500 degrees hydrogen. So that's about half what a self-cooled steam turbine can actually handle. It's very rare indeed that you're going to find a hydrogen vent that produces more than 340 grams per second when you're factoring in the eruption period. And obviously when it's dormant, it's not going to require any cooling either. 
So you could rest assured that as long as we've got enough conductivity in here to actually heat up the water, and we do in here, you can see it's heating up a little bit over here, you could be confident that this machine isn't going to overheat. And that's basically the build. Uh, so it works with basic materials. You only need a little bit of crude oil and a little bit of petroleum for this drip pump. You only need a little bit of steel for the gas pump and the liquid valve. And you need a little bit of plastic for making the steam turbine. But once you do that, it's effectively power positive. It's it's mostly power positive just from the heat of the steam turbine, to be honest. But you, you have got the hydrogen here. That can provide a little bit of extra power as well. And this just effectively lets you pump the hydrogen to wherever you want it to go without having to worry about overpressurizing or worrying about your stuff overheating. So just to illustrate what happens with a relatively low amount of hydrogen here, you'll see this hydrogen gas vent is erupting. The gas is coming out around, well, it is coming out at 500 degrees, but it's immediately stabilizing at around about 170 degrees. And that's the same over here, more or less. It's a little bit colder over here because the liquid is dumping from the vent onto these tiles. So these tiles are cooling down a bit faster than these tiles. But again, if you have a more conductive material than granite in here, that will equalize faster. But this will just illustrate that even in a case where you've got relatively little material in here, so long as you've got the, the steam in here and the steam turbine is working away, you're not going to have any issues with this approaching the 275 temperature. If it gets a little bit of extra temperature, the steam turbine can handle that for a bit. And then that temperature should go down again fairly quickly. Yeah, that's it. Short video today. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you've seen, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more interesting information about Oxygen Not Included. We do discussion videos, tier lists, meme videos. We stream live on Twitch as well on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. We're currently doing a Mouth Readers Only run and then Badlands Boffins where we're trying out a lot of builds like this. We did actually build something like this on our Flip Farters run. It wasn't quite as organized, but it, 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 did, the, it did the job pretty well. We didn't use the drip pump. And uh, yeah, there's a Discord where we hang out and we post memes and builds as well. Again, most of are not included, but there are some other games on there as well. But that's it. Enjoy, enjoy access to your hydrogen in the early game. I'll uh, see you later. Bye for now. Whisker sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers. Dead Eye XL. Grey Area. Hiatus Seuss Neo Deus Machina The Max Not Binary And Uglavisk